What's up, guys? Joey Phillips here, Academy of DNA Diligence. Just got done watching uh, Dell's Big Trees video today on uh, COVID-19, whereas they were talking about um, hemoglobin in COVID-19 and how COVID-19 basically attacks the one beta chain of hemoglobin. So we're just going to jump right in here and look at some of the things surrounding uh, COVID-19 in relation to hemoglobin and oxygen transport, right? So one of the doctors that he had on today was speaking about um, the use of ventilators uh, in the um, you know, ER units, ICU units, um, in relation to patients coming in, displaying symptoms of hypoxia. Right, blue in the face, completely conscious, um, unlike anything they've ever seen. Um, not really related to SARDs and ARDs, but really displaying um, symptoms that they've described as uh, nothing that they've really ever seen. So, what they, uh, this one particular doctor, this brave doctor, don't even remember the name uh, at this time, but um, he was going basically against the standard uh, traditional protocol handed down from the top um, authorities down. And instead of doing ventilators, which they come to find out were actually harming uh, more people than they were uh, doing, um, you know, helping to heal people, um, they decided to switch to oxygen as the first thing as their go to. And so uh, when you breathe, in through your lungs, your body transports that oxygen uh, into the blood so that the blood can basically transport that oxygen into the tissue, et cetera, et cetera, so that your whole body gets oxygenated. The lack of oxygen supplied to the body is called a hypoxia or hypoxemia, for example. Okay, so there's a, a real strong relationship between um, a few different genes. And we're gonna go over some of that stuff just briefly uh, before we do. I'm not a doctor, I'm not here to prevent, diagnose, treat, prevent, mitigate disease. This is intended for education and research only. Please consult your healthcare provider. So a couple of days ago, um, new information's come out. This is something that I already visited on. If you go back and look, I believe at the Part two um, on the website. Um, the website is DNA Diligence.academy. There's a video up there, part two, that talks about hypoxia and which pathways basically regulate um, that environment within the super pathways. But today, um, the hot topic of the day is hemoglobin and the relationship between hemoglobin and carbon dioxide, right? The respiratory um, system, these um, ventilators are doing more harm than good, as is being reported, damaging the tissue in the lung, further increasing inflammation and cutting the supply of oxygen off even more so to the body, uh, which is again why they're switching over to oxygen at the initial phase of intake into these hospitals. I believe this particular one was in New York City. Anyhow, um, getting into some of the research, if we look at hemoglobin, we can pull that up basically on the gene cards here, type in hemoglobin. HBB is the number one gene for hemoglobin, which is in fact the beta chain as they are describing, beta chain of the hemoglobin. So this is the number one gene as far as hemoglobin with the score of 198, okay? So what can we do to uh, help regulate uh, hemoglobin um, in the body? So uh, first things, it's obviously related to the innate immune system and erythrocytes take up uh, carbon dioxide and release of oxygen. So this, this ebb and flow of oxygen intake and release of carbon dioxide is getting um, all messed up here. Um, again, if you go back into the videos on the website, DNA Diligence.academy, I do speak of Brady Kinnon 1 as being the uh, causal relationship between the dry cough 
all right, Expo exponentially upregulated. This is a pro-inflammatory cytokine that leads to dry cough, okay? Uh, one of the receptors of note, um, as we previously talked about, was DPP-4. This is referencing DPP-3. Okay, so there's a lot of um, crosstalk going on between this hemoglobin gene and things that we've already previously discussed. Okay, so this has to do with inflammation and pain signaling, right? This Brady Kinnon receptor. All right, so if we just scroll down here, we can figure out exactly what we need to be doing with hemoglobin, this HBB gene in relation to the transportation of oxygen. Obviously, oxygen is gonna be a, a really important factor if you're getting admitted into a hospital or, or any sort of other medical establishment. However, we do see zinc being mentioned here. We see copper being mentioned, um, iron being mentioned um, as well. And so it's important to get the minerals, okay? Your body needs that foundation of mineralization in order for everything else to function correctly. I'm just gonna tell you right out the gate, a nice fulvic acid fits really well here because it literally has all the bound trace minerals your body needs. Plus, as we'll discuss later, it also has an amino acid profile to it. I believe there's nine amino, acid, uh, amino acids found in a fulvic humic acid, such as proline, which is gonna be another one of those amino acids that's gonna be vital in this whole process. Okay, so down here, they're also mentioned, uh, let's see here, um, carboxycinnamic acid, okay? So I just wanna stop there, and let's look at cinnamic acid here in a paper that is described. Where can we find cinnamic acid, okay? We can look at dietary fibers. We look, we look at curcumin, apples, blueberries, Cherries, cinnamon, obviously, great anti antiviral. Coffee, ginger is going to be my go to in this situation, as we'll discuss later with what they call the ubiquitin protosome complex, which is involved with this whole process in relation to antigen processing and presentation and to allow the body to have proper protein folding. Okay, we're going to get to that called the ubiquitin protosome complex, which has to do with heat shock protein 70 and heat shock protein 90. These are called chaperones. They assist in the UPS system, ubiquitin protosome system, okay? Um, here's some other things mentioned, rosemary, sage, thyme, Mediterranean diet, right here, guys, the Mediterranean diet, literally, right there. So you can get all those through your foods, okay? All right, so that's um, uh, cinnamic acid, as they are in a roundabout way, uh, um, mentioning this here in this, um, this link, okay? So that's number one. So when we look at, let's see, if we could scroll back up here and look at the pathway involved with carbon dioxide and release of oxygen in relation to um, hemoglobin, beta one, we can look at the super pathway associated with this exchange, which it's going to mention HBA2 here. So that's going to be a very important factor here as well, which we will look at in just a little bit. Okay. Um, but before we do, if we go back here um, and look at hemoglobin, right, as the general search, we can scroll down and we get to number nine here, erythropoietin, EPO gene. Now, if I open that up, it's going to give me a very nice description. Expression of this gene is upregulated under hypoxia conditions, in turn leading to increased erythropoiesis and enhanced oxygen carrying capacity to the blood. Enhanced oxygen carrying capacity to the blood. Are you guys staying with me here? This gene is going to be very important. Okay, so let's see if we got anything down here in relation to compounds that we might be able to employ right away. We see, let's scroll, let's throw this out. Expand this out, tannic acid. 
is one. Tannic acid can be found in many things. Our particular go-to that we like to use is Prunella vulgaris. It has tannic acid. <clears throat> Obviously, we see iron. Iron transport is extremely important for heme synthesis, hemoglobin, therefore oxygen carrying capacity. Okay, most of these are going to be all drugs here. We see liver extracts uh, mentioned. Liver extracts are high in uh, B vitamins, guys. B vitamins. B12 is especially important for oxygenation and hemoglobin synthesis. Now, if I scroll down here, we want to look at hypoxia, regulation of hypoxia-inducible factor by oxygen. Okay, if we click on that link, it takes us to this link over here. Okay, cellular response uh, to stress, cellular response to hypoxia. Here we are. Again, I mentioned heat shock proteins being important for the regulation of the ubiquitin protosome complex. Detoxification of reaction oxygen species. We're going to get to that in just a little bit with oxygen. But for now, if we just look at face value, we see proline, oxygen dependent, what? Proline. Guys, proline can also be found in fulvic acid. Okay. So we're covering all our, our bases here with one compound thus far. Okay. So, um, Going back here, another thing they mentioned real quick, I might have skipped ahead here. Um, with cinnamic acid, um, they're mentioning in this paper here, let me, let me scroll back here so, so you can see my screen. Cinnamic acid, they're mentioning another form that's similar in structure to cinnamic acid, right? So let me just do a control F search here so you know what I'm talking about. Cinnamic acid derivatives, Chlor chlorogenic acid is one of those, okay? Can be isolated from green coffee beans um, and forms a black compound with iron, believed to be responsible for the blackening of cut or cooked potatoes, okay? So if I just went out and did a search, a general search for chlorogenic acid, I'm going to see a few different things mentioned, right? Biosynthesis and natural food occurrences, right here. They are look. They are referencing hibiscus, right here. It's the first thing mentioned in food. Now, if I did a crossword search for hibiscus and oxygen, the first link that comes up is pure oxygen generators. Hibiscus, the old reliable hibiscus. Scroll a little bit further down. House plants decrease carbon dioxide levels and increase oxygen in the air. Hibiscus. Hibiscus is literally, um, you can purchase this as a tea. Buy the plant, hang them up in your house. Do whatever you got to do. Hibiscus increases oxygen. Another thing, fulvic acid increases oxygenation in the body by 40, uh, up to 40, 45%. Okay. So those are two things right out the gate that we can find just by looking at the hemoglobin gene, okay? The, this gene that they're mentioning in this study that COVID-19 attacks, okay? So there we go. Going back to this EPO gene, if we look, um, if you scroll back here again, proline, where we kind of left off, we can actually look at the molecules or chemical compounds listed down here, one of them being ascorbate, vitamin C. Is this perhaps why vitamin C is so useful? Is, you, is it because it hits this, this, um, these hypoxia pathways? Absolutely. And also siconic acid. Okay, those are, so now we have four things in our toolbox that we can utilize. Now, um, down here, it's going to mention a, a few different proteins here, 75 proteins. So when I mention the ubiquitin protosome complex, these are all, this, all these PSM genes, protosome genes, protosome, 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 protosome. There's EPO mentioned, 
there's ubiquitine, the ubiquitine protosome gene here. Okay, VEGF is involved. Resveratrol, right, is a VEGF inhibitor. What else can we find? RNT gene connected to AHR, our hydrocarbon receptor. Resveratrol and elegic acid also hit those channels. So pomegranate and resveratrol. What else can we find here? You can double check my work later, right? <clears throat> this has to do with um, the uh, blood coagulation factors. This gene here, nanokinase, um, helps with that as well. Double check my work, please. Look at all these PSM genes though. PSM, PSM, PSM. All these PSM genes has a hypoxia. And then down here we see a carbon dioxide gene. In fact, this is the only one mentioned in the cellular response to hypoxia. Carbon dioxide gene, oxygen exchange. So what if we went over and looked at and typed in CA9 as the gene, we find carbonic and hydrase 9. What falls directly below that? Hypoxia inducible factor, okay? So maybe I'll start there real quick, just so you can look at this, uh, probably the number one gene in relation to hypoxia, right? Which is really what we're talking about. Your body's literally being starved of oxygen, okay? Let me scroll down here and we can look and see maybe what compounds they're listing for us. This is DNA diligence. I teach this every week, Wednesday nights. Okay, get signed up for the class. You're gonna learn a bunch, I promise. Okay, so let's see, then I skip past that. Uh, compounds, let's see, there it is. Um, compounds, let's see, VEGF inhibitors. Okay, VEGF inhibitors, VEGF inhibitors. You see that? Again, resveratrol, elegic acid, pomegranate and resveratrol. Okay, oh, there's 26 more. Let me expand that out real quick. Maybe I missed something. Also, if you go back and look at the second video I posted, part two of COVID-19 ARD SARDS and all that, um, you'll see that the um, number one gene involved with the super pathway is involved with the transportation of mannose, fucoidean, i.e. bladderwrack, and vitamin C. So therefore, those three compounds work in synergy to also help regulate hypoxia, okay? Hypoxia-inducible factor inhibitor, okay? Double check my work. Hypoxia-inducible factor inhibitors, the EGF inhibitors. Going back here, if we opened up CA9, carbonic, um, carbonic and hydrase 9, Okay, what does it do? First of all, it's a zinc gene. So there we are again, zinc. Uh, including biological processes of respiration, calcification, acid-base balance, bone resorption, and the formation of aqueous humor, cerebral spinal fluid, saliva, gastric acid. Okay, that does a lot for you. So we know that it is a uh, zinc dependent gene. What other clues can we find in here, right? This catalyzes the reversible hydration of carbon dioxide to form what? Bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, HCO3 and hydrogen, okay? You can literally go out and buy hydrogen tablets. Go spend pennies on the dollar. Go buy some sodium bicarbonate by all means. Obviously, consult your healthcare practitioner first. <clears throat> However, these are the clues. Let's scroll down, see what we can find. I'm going real fast here, guys. 16 compounds mentioned. CA2 inhibitor, carbonic and hydrase inhibitors. There it is, sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Zinc and what? Elegic acid or pomegranate once again, okay? So moving on real quick, all these compounds are gonna work together to help regulate 
the flow of oxygen and carbon dioxide in relation to oxygen transportation into the hemoglobin, which then in turn transports the oxygen into the blood, into the tissue. You see? So how important is oxygen, right? You wouldn't be here today. What's the number one gene with oxygen? When we type it in, 65 score over here. Superoxide dismutase, what does it do? This is a um, antioxidant enzyme that your body produces on its own along with glutathione and catalase. Extremely important to regulate um, oxidative stress and free radical production. Okay, this one converts the negative impact of oxidative stress into molecular oxygen. So it helps your body convert those negative things into literal oxygen for your body, which again helps regulate all biological systems as it says. Okay, and I'm going real fast here. This is just a quick video I'm popping, popping out here in response to Del Bigtree's video that got my mind working. I've already touched base on a lot of this stuff, okay? CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor. Okay, you've got sodium bicarbonate, H3OC, or H, H3OC, whatever that was, right? Sodium bicarbonate transportation is directly linked to CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor. Okay, detoxification of reaction oxygen species. And what do we have here? Minerals, again, right up front. Copper, zinc, iron. These are the common themes held between all these genes. Manganese. You guys, you need a fulvic acid like none other right now. Period, point blank. Okay. Um, we also got a lot of other things um, that were that we've already put out in relation to possible remedies. I will not mention that in this video. Okay. But you need copper and zinc work together. Vitamin E. Okay. Vitamin E can be found in many different compounds. We are partial to C buckthorn oil. Why? Because it has high doses of vitamin E. It also has like 200 other naturally occurring compounds, including vitamin C, right? And then right there, we see CBD, right here. Medical cannabis, CBD, helps to quench free radical production, thereby um, helping you oxygenate the entire body by converting all those things from um, the conversion into oxygen, literally, right? And one other thing, um, if iron is uh, free iron, as they say, iron overload causes huge amounts of issues. Um, it's kind of the kind of like the rusting phenomenon, right? Um, on an old car that's maybe left outside for long periods of time. This is that rusting on the inside. Iron overload causes a crap ton of issues. What can we do to help bind free iron? None other than lactoferrin, a natural glycoprotein involved with iron inflammatory homeostasis. Okay, what's it say here? Uh, let's see, anti-inflammatory activity against interleukin-6, thus upregulating ferroportin, that's an iron gene. Here's another iron gene, right? Pivotal factors of iron and inflammatory homeostasis. Consequently, bovine lactoferrin, BLF, inhibits intracellular iron overload, an unsafe condition enhancing in vivo susceptibility to infections as well as anemia and inflammation. So I'm just gonna leave that right there, guys. Hibiscus, go drink some hibiscus tea, get yourself some fulvic acid, uh, look me up. We've got other things that we're doing that are real special right now. Um, CBD, all kinds of things um, for you guys. So I hope you have a blessed day, and I hope this uh, helps explain uh, the frustration from that doctor in New York and a lot of others that are coming out with the truth right now and um, potential remedies in response to what's actually taking place. And again, this video is for education and informational purposes only. As always, please consult your healthcare provider.